Hi everyone, welcome back to our series on developing Game Boy games in C using the Game Boy Developer Kit. If you've been following us so far then you have a good idea how to create graphics and move them around on your screen and today we're going to look at a new topic, we're going to look at sound. So obviously in your game sound is a really important thing right from the beginning when the Nintendo sound boots up on your cartridge. You've got to think about things like the music that you're playing in your games and you've also got to think about the kind of sounds that your game makes as your characters walk around in it whether they're jumping or dying like that. Today we're going to look at the basics of how to make the bleeps and bloops of kind of firing effects and jumping effects. So let's get stuck into that. So before we get into the code you need to understand a little bit about the Game Boy and how other retro consoles create sound. So the sound that you're used to hearing from a musical instrument like a stringed instrument is more like this nice smooth wave at the top here where the wave kind of decreases slowly and increases slowly and you have a nice curve. Computers and CPUs obviously aren't particularly good at doing nice smooth things like this. They're used to on and off, they're binary. So if they were driving a speaker, they would do something more like this one at the bottom. So this is a square wave where you've got equal amounts of on and equal amounts of off kind of below the line and a square wave is a kind of quadrangle wave so quadrangles can have different lengths um, kind of ratios between on and off so a square wave is where it's on equal off equal but you can get different variations of that which make different sounds and that square wave sound or the quadrangle sound is what you're used to hearing those beeps and bleeps that 8-bit computers will put out not the kind of sounds that you're used to hearing in modern games where it's actually really well synthesized or recorded real instruments. So the Game Boy has four sound channels. The first two channels can produce these quadrangular waves, the kind of square waves or different kind of sounds you want like that. The third channel is called a programmable wave table. So we're not going to go into this today, but you can play back samples. So like wave samples that you've recorded of a voice, for example but it's a really difficult thing to do. You can only play very, very low quality ones and it pauses everything in your game while it does it. So hardly any commercial games actually ever use this, but some did. And the fourth channel, which again, we're not gonna look at today, but we will look at in a future episode, is the noise generator. So if you want to create explosions or drum noises, that's what you would use for it. So today we're gonna to look at how you make kind of bleeps and beeps. So your kind of fire sound effects or jump sound effects with channel one. Channel one's slightly different than channel two and it can do something called a frequency sweep where it can kind of increase the frequency or decrease the frequency. But other than that, it's almost identical to two. So you can actually play two different kind of musical notes at the same time. We're just gonna show you one today on channel one. And again, in a future episode, we'll show you more how you'd actually play music in your game. So let's get started and look at the code. So I've opened up a normal project that we've been working on in the previous tutorials. If you don't know how to set this up in Visual Studio Code, please go and watch the previous tutorials. But we've got a basic main function uh, and we've got a, a game loop, a while loop that's just going to go on forever. And what we're looking for is the joypad to be changed or touched in any way. So any button will kick this bit of code off here. And this is where we're going to write our kind of sound being played. But before we can do any of that, the first thing you need to do on the Game Boy and you need to do this once at the kind of beginning of your game is to actually enable the sound. So if I just paste this code in here and we'll talk through it. So all the sound kind of functions on the Game Boy use what are called registers. So registers in a, in a CPU, in a computer, are specific addresses in memory that control kind of different hardware. So in this case, we're setting the memory address at a particular location to whatever value we need so that it actually powers the Game Boy's sound hardware. So you have to do three specific registers and set them right at the beginning before you do any sound and they have to be done in this order otherwise you'll end up with potentially some problems later. So the first one is this N52 reg and what that's going to do is we're going to set it to 80 in hexadecimal. 80 in hexadecimal is this number in binary this will help you kind of understand what we're doing. And basically this first one here in the binary tells the Game Boy to turn on the whole sound system. So if we don't do that at all, or we don't set it to one here, you won't get any sound no matter what you do later on. The second one 
uh, sets the sound channel for both the left and right channels because don't forget on the Game Boy even though it's got one speaker if you put the headphones on you've got stereo sound so it sets them both to maximum level so just put that to hex decimal 77 and the last one is to enable what channels you want and uh, obviously we've discussed already there are four channels um, but there's eight bits here and the reason is each channel's got a left and a right um, audio output so that's just setting them all on. Now if you only need to use particular ones you could potentially save battery power by not setting them all on um, but it might just be simpler to set them all which is FF. So you just need to do that once at the beginning somewhere before you actually start creating some sound but if you forget to do it or you do it in the wrong order then you're going to have some problems. So let's start going through actually creating our first sound. We're going to create a kind of jumping noise but we're going to go through just register by register showing you how that works. So we're working on uh, channel one, which is the uh, quadrilateral wave channel. And it has one extra function which the others don't have, which is this um, frequency sweep setting. This is the first register. So NR1, that's channel one, register zero. We're gonna set that to this, hex, this hexadecimal value, which is this in binary. And if you look here in my comments, and this is how I even remember how this all works because it's quite complicated. Um, if you're counting from the left of this binary number, then this first one is seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So it's zero based. So the first one from the left, seven, isn't used. The next three, six, five, four, they set the sweep time. So a sweep is an increase or decrease in frequency and the pitch of the sound. So we're gonna tell it here, these, this is the sweep time. This is um, how, over what time it should sweep. So we're gonna just set that to be one. The next bit we've got here is the third bit and that's the direction. So we want it to increase in pitch. The next two, next three, sorry, so two through zero, which is three, is how much it should shift in pitch per kind of iteration. So it's gonna step up effectively. So we're gonna set that to be six in decimal, so it's gonna shift a particular amount. If you increase that, it will shift quicker effectively. If you decrease it, it will shift slower. So we take what we've built up in our, our binary number here. So if we take the binary number that we've constructed and use one of the websites that I've previously shown you for converting binary numbers into hexadecimal. So you just paste the binary number in here click convert and it will tell you the hexadecimal value is 16. Don't forget hexadecimal, you start the value by having a, a zero and an X that tells the system it's a hexadecimal number. So that's the first step. That's not gonna do anything yet though. We've just literally set that frequency sweep. So now we're gonna go on to setting the next register. So if I paste the next register in, we'll go through that as well. So this is channel one, register one, NR11. This register controls two things. So it controls something called the wave duty cycle. So of our quadrangular wave, the duty cycle is basically how long the wave is on. So it's at the top and how long the wave is off. So you can set it to either being on 12.5% of the time, on 25% of the time, on 50% of the time, which will be on as much as it's off, or 75% of the time. And depending on which value you choose of these four values, it will just sound slightly different. It's like the, the timbre of the, the note. I will put a link to an article and a video that kind of show you what that sounds different if you look below in the description and you'll get a better understanding but it kind of just makes it gutsier I guess if you listen to the sound of it. So that means that seven and six here they set which duty cycle you've got so I've got it set as zero one which is one in hexadecimal one in binary in fact uh, one in decimal sorry and so that will be duty cycle one which is 25 percent of the time I just like the sound of that one. And then all the rest of the digits in here in our binary number are the length of the sound. Bizarrely a higher number here is a shorter sound and a, long, a smaller number is a longer sound. So I'm gonna use something else later on really to adjust how long my sound length is. So I'm just gonna set it to length zero, which is a long sound. It won't continue forever by doing this, but it will be longer. So we just want to leave it on that. So again, I take that binary number I've constructed, I convert it into hexadecimal and it ends up as 40. Okay, let's look at the next one. So this is channel one, register two, and this controls what's called the volume envelope. 
And really what that means is you can fade a sound down or you can fade a sound up. It just makes it sound less harsh, especially if you're kind of playing lots of sounds. So this again is broken down into bits. So seven all the way through to four. So seven, six, five, four, these first four ones are the initial volume you want it to start at. Uh, and in my case, I want that to be seven. That's the number there. And then the next bit is which direction the volume changes. So does it go up or does it go down? So in this case, I want my, my volume to go down. So I set it to zero. And then the remaining three bits here from two to zero is the length of each um, kind of step that you want. So again, it's how quickly it's going to do it. So I've got this here as a, a length of three um, in binary here. So it will take a reasonable amount of time. Um, so you can tweak that and it will take longer to go down. You can change the initial volume um, and it will um, start louder and you can change the direction of it. So you can play around with that, but you'll see you can also just turn it off. Um, so if you do a, a sweep step of zero, it will just turn sweeping off and you won't get that volume change at all. Let's look at the next one. So channel one, register three. So this is where you start to set the frequency, but this uh, has a whole byte, so eight bits dedicated to it, but it's the least significant bits of the frequency. So the frequency is actually made up by, I think it's 11, we'll see in a minute, bits. And this is the kind of the lower end of that. So you'll see in a moment what that looks like when we get the next bit here, but I'm just gonna set this to zero so all those bits will be zero. Okay, the last sound register we need to program before we actually get something working. So this is uh, channel one, register four. The first one is just to actually initialize the channel. So the first bit here is a one to say, play something. The next bit here, the sixth bit, this is whether the sound should just play continuously. So if you want it to just carry on until the next sound is played on this channel, then just leave that to be um, zero. But if you want it to actually um, stop and use the length that you set further up, then set it to one. So we've got it set to one, so it's not consecutive, it won't continue going on. Um, bits five through three are unused. And then bits two through zero, which is these last three here, are the most significant bits of our frequency. So if our most significant bits are these, that would be that bit there, and our least significant bits we set up here to be zero, there's eight of them, so eight, nine, 10, 11, yeah, there's 11 in total, then that is the hexadecimal number X300. So if you want to increase the frequency, you just need to increase some of these bits. If you want a very tiny increase in frequency, then you change the least significant bits. They have the least effect on the frequency. If you want to make much bigger changes in frequency, you would change the most significant bits. So you actually have a lot of range of frequencies. I'm not going to go through today how you might even figure out how a particular frequency is a particular note. We'll look at that when we look at music, but have a play around with those and you'll be able to change the frequency. So that's everything you need to get a sound playing. What I'm gonna do here is just put a delay at the end of our game loop so that we don't repeat the sound too quickly and we can hear what a sound looks like. So if we were to compile this now, just like we normally do, so run the make file that we've got included in our project. And if I go and open up the emulator, you will sometimes find, depending on what your machine um, is, that the emulator sound won't be perfect. Uh, I'm running this in a virtual machine, so you might hear that the sound isn't exactly perfect but if we run it now if we just press any button hopefully you can hear that as a kind of it's, it's a sound i used for a, a jump a bouncing sound so that's really the code you need but you can see it is relatively complex and the only way to learn this is to go through each one of these and play around with them test them out i'm going to put a link here that i've got at the bottom here to a much more detailed but potentially harder to understand guides to the Game Boy Sound, go through it in a lot of detail. And I'll also make sure I put a link to this file online so you can see all my comments without having to pause the video and read through them. But hopefully that's enough to get you going to kind of play around with those kind of beeps and bleeps that we're gonna do. And in future videos, we'll look at making uh, music with that and looking at how you can do kind of noise sound effects, explosions and things. But that's all for now. Please make sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.